you in former comments mentioned uh, this uh, on your blog. At about 16, you're an adult who's mature and can make decisions. Uh, you're that at 16. I don't care what anybody says. Even going so far as to say, you know, 16 people. Uh, when you're 16, you should be married and uh, and could be pregnant or should be pregnant. Yeah, that's that's a hit piece you took from Media Matters. You don't use it to get clicks on your Let's state publication. The, well, are you using it right now to try to get clicks with this interaction? I'm curious about you speaking to the development of the human brain at the, by the age of 25. I seem to recall you advocating on behalf of firearm possession at the age of 18. Do you think let's, that's appropriate? Let's, let's stay on the bill, please. I just have to question, you know, some of your public policy, you know, expertise. When, you know, I'm reading here, Singapore is able to have nice things in part because they execute drug dealers by hanging and arrest even petty vandals and thieves and beat them with a cane until they bleed. You just got a small taste of the questions that Democratic lawmakers in Tennessee asked to right-wing propagandist Matt Walsh after he testified on behalf of a bill proposed by Republicans in the state to ban gender-affirming care for trans youth. And I probably should have put a not safe for work tag on this video because as you saw, they clapped his cheeks hard. And that was humiliating for him because not only did they bring up his past statements that are just genuinely authoritarian and unhinged, but they made a fool of him and they proved to all of us how easy it is to dismantle right-wing propaganda with regard to trans rights and trans issues. All you have to do is try. All you have to do is use your platform to debunk these myths. Now, before we talk about what they said to him and asked him, I want to give you some context because the bill that he showed up to support is HB0001, and it would seek to ban gender affirming care for trans youth. And as the Tennessean reports, a Republican backed bill to ban transgender Tennessee youth from accessing puberty blockers, hormone treatments, and other health care procedures passed out of a key Senate committee and continues to speed through the House, teeing the controversial bill up for a floor vote in the coming weeks. Doctors would be prohibited under the law from providing any health care to minors to identify with or live as a purported identity inconsistent with their sex assignment at birth. Medical professionals could lose their licenses to practice, and the legislation also would allow young people to sue their parents or medical providers for damages. Now, the bill was introduced by Republican William Lambert, and it initially contained language that would conflate gender-affirming care, which experts deem as medically necessary, mind you, with child neglect and child abuse. So, this bill is absolutely authoritarian and potentially disastrous, but since Tennessee is controlled by Republicans, odds are it's going to pass. And Tennessee is just one of 21 other states considering bans on medically necessary gender affirming care for trans youth. So, of course, being the hate monger and propagandist that he is, Matt Walsh showed up to testify in support of this legislation. And he gave a three minute long live filled rant about how this is mutilation. It's chemical castration, disregarding what the experts say, spreading misinformation. And this isn't surprising. We all expected Matt Walsh to say this. Right. And of course, the Daily Wire wrote an article about this. So he's doing this to virtue signal to his base. But what I don't think anyone expected was how much this would backfire for Matt Walsh. So the very first question that a Democratic lawmaker asked was about his previous statements, his disgusting, perverted statements about age of consent laws. And whew, I'm sure he's regretting making those comments because, boy, did that come back to bite him in the ass. Let's listen. Um, people uh, testified today that they uh, had their gender affirming surgery at 16. And I know uh, you in former comments mentioned uh, this uh, on your blog. At about 16, you're an adult who's mature and can make decisions. Uh, you're that at 16. I don't care what anybody says. Even going so far as to say, you know, 16 people, uh, when you're 16, you should be married and uh, and could be pregnant or should be pregnant. Um, so I'm curious if 16 is uh, a uh, an adult in your view. Uh, why does this bill have uh, the uh, minor de defined as 18? Uh, Mr. Yeah, well, that's, uh, recognized. yeah, that's that's a hit piece you took from Media Matters, uh, from something when I was a, a radio host. Uh, 13, 14 years ago, my early 20s. Uh, it's also not an accurate reflection of what I actually said. Um, I was talking about uh, the fact that people tended to marry young historically, and that's all that that was about. Um, how does that relate to, the, to this? 
it's related because you're the one who said that a 16 year old cannot consent, isn't mature enough to consent to a double mastectomy, even if their doctor and parents say that this procedure is appropriate for them. But yet you think that it's okay for a 16 year old to be able to get pregnant and to be objectified sexually by perverts like you. So that's that's fine. They're mature enough to be your sexual object, but too immature to make decisions about their own gender identity, which they're confident in. That is absolutely brilliant. What a great point to make. And I love how he claims that this was a hit piece by Media Matters that that Democratic lawmaker cited. No, Media Matters and actually Lance from the Surfs, more specifically, they just played audio of you talking. It was your own words. So it wasn't a hit piece. They weren't manipulating what you had to say. You are the one who made those creepy comments, those perverted comments. So I love that this is coming back to bite him because, I mean, it's a really valid point. Why are 16 year olds mature enough for what you think they should be mature enough for pregnancy and marriage, but not mature enough for gender affirming care. And by the way, double mastectomies performed on teenage boys is also very, very rare. No child is getting bottom surgery, right? You have to be 18 years old. And even when you're 18 years old, there's a lot of barriers to getting that because it's cost prohibitive. We live in a for-profit system where healthcare is very, very expensive. So it's a great question to ask. Now, another great question to ask is, why are you even here? Now, I'm paraphrasing, of course. You're going to see how it was phrased, but you aren't an expert. You don't have a medical license. You're not a doctor. So why are we listening to you in the first place? Can you give us a summary of your educational background or your healthcare education experience? M Mr. Walsh, you recognized my experience in healthcare. Your educational background. I'm just curious. You 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 yeah. testified as to a lot of your own research. So I'm curious for what purpose you do that and what background you have to qualify you to speak to that. Well, my Mr. background Walsh. that qualifies me to speak to this is that I'm a human being with a brain and common sense, and I have a soul. And so, therefore, I think it's a really bad idea to chemically castrate children. That is my experience. Um, also, I I did. Now it's true. I didn't I didn't go to college, but I did go to school long enough to learn how to read. So I can read the data for myself, and that's exactly what I've done. Uh, Representative Clemens, here I And for what purpose do you um, conduct your research and use this brain of yours? Mr. Walsh, you're recognized. I use it for the purpose of trying to protect children from being castrated and mutilated. That's one of the things I try to do. You don't use it Clemens. to... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You don't use it to get clicks on your Let's state publication? It. Well, are you using it right now to try to get clicks with this interaction? <laughs> On, no. I, 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 I really like the Mr. idea Walsh. of getting, uh, of, of drawing attention to the fact that this is happening to children. I know you seem to find it very amusing. I don't. That was just, oh, beautiful. That was so beautiful. Well, <clears throat> my qualifications are that I am a human being with a brain. Mm. <laughs> You're going to have to do a little bit better than that. Also, um, I didn't go to college, but I did go to school long enough to know how to read. Oh, is that so? How very convincing. I think that just by saying that, I'm convinced that you are qualified to talk about these issues, these medical issues. <laughs> I ain't getting no education. I ain't even going to prager you. <laughs> like, what, what is that? Like, I love how he's trying to make it seem as if he has authority and knowledge on this issue when he's talking out of his ass and quite literally just making things up. On the Joe Rogan show, he was caught making up statistics about the number of children receiving puberty blockers. He said it was like in the millions when it was like a couple thousand. This man is a charlatan and that lawmaker exposed him for that. He's saying that, oh, are you doing this just to get clicks? And the answer is yes, he's driving up hysteria specifically because that does really well for him. It gets him clicks. So I love that. Now, another follow-up question from this lawmaker who brought up a really excellent point of hypocrisy from Matt Walsh. You know, if you're going to come before a committee and make mischaracterizations and misrepresentations, it's fair game for us to ask you your educational background and your foundational knowledge for making such characterizations. That's, that's my point. So I'm curious about you speaking to the development of the human brain at, by the age of 25. 
I seem to recall you advocating on behalf of firearm possession at the age of 18. Do you think that's let's, appropriate? Let's stay on the bill, please. That was such an amazing point by that lawmaker. During that same hearing, Matt Walsh advocated for bans on gender-affirming care for anyone under the age of 25, claiming that the brain isn't fully developed until you're 25. Well, if that's the case, then why is it appropriate for underdeveloped individuals to have firearms at the age of 18? Why are 18 to 25-year-olds even, not qualified to make these decisions about their gender identity, but yet you think they should be able to make decisions about whether or not they can purchase a deadly weapon. It doesn't make sense. It's a double standard. Basically, Matt Walsh is saying, whatever I think is good should be allowed, and whatever I think is bad should not be allowed. We're not going to base that on statistics, on data. It's just on my own f***ing feelings. And that right there is what was exposed, and it was so good. So good to see this fraud be exposed as the charlatan that he is in front of everyone who was watching this. I mean, think about how insane this is. Did anyone restrict Matt Walsh's gender expression? Because even if he is a cis man, he still has a gender expression, right? When he was a kid, I'm sure that he liked the color blue and tried to act more masculine, play with boys' toys. Did anyone intervene and say, no, you need to grow out your hair and wear dresses, little boy? No, but he's saying I should have the authority to override what doctors and parents say is appropriate for their children. It's just stunning. It is genuinely stunning here. Now, another area where Matt Walsh's disgustingly authoritarian comments came back to bite him in the ass happened next when a lawmaker pulled up a recent tweet from him. I think the previous representative, you know, proved that you have no medical background, correct? Correct. Uh, no. So, so you're here probably just as a public policy. You, you're trying to address good public policy, correct? Or Mr. Walsh. Yes. So I just have to question, you know, some of your public policy, you know, expertise when, you know, I'm reading here, Singapore is able to have nice things in part because they execute drug dealers by hanging and arrest even petty vandals and thieves and beat them with a cane until they bleed. We don't have nice things here because we aren't willing to do what is required to maintain them. So, you know, with statements like that, I kind of have to question your public policy beliefs. And, you know, and you also stated there'd been no studies well, I'm sitting here holding a study from the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, from the University of Pittsburgh about the uh, suicidal disparities between transgender and cisgender uh, adults and children. Uh, so I think, you know, before you state things, you may need to know all the facts. That right there, my friends, is what I like to call a mic drop moment. That was absolutely beautifully done. And to give you some additional context, that lawmaker was responding to Matt Walsh making this claim. Uh, well, the claim that uh, you know, doing the chemical castration drugs or surgery or hormonal intervention, the claim that this prevents suicide or uh, has uh, positive psychological effects down the line is utterly, totally baseless. Yeah. Now, obviously, that couldn't be further from the truth, but this is what Matt Walsh does. He lies. He has an agenda. The things that he says are detached from empirical reality. He doesn't actually care about what the experts say. This is all just partisan hackery and hate mongering that he specifically weaponizes to get views and clicks. It's uh, it's sickening, but I mean, this is one of the most prolific hate mongers in the country so it's not surprising but what is surprising is to see him exposed and to have lawmakers actually call him out on his bullshit so if you want to know how to dismantle these anti-trans far-right fascistic talking points these lawmakers provided us with an excellent blueprint